What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. If you don't know who I am, my name is Nasser. I'm a second year medical student at King's College London and I'm doing this UCAT series to help you guys do as best as you can on your upcoming UCAT test. So in today's video, I'm gonna be covering the situational judgment section. This section is supposed to be a test of how good of a moral and ethical doctor you're gonna be in the future. It's supposed to be a little bit of a personality test, I guess. The whole purpose of my series is that I answer these questions live on camera and I walk you through my thought process as I read the question, as I look at the different answers and as I evaluate them. And that way you guys can see what it is that I'm thinking about while I do the questions and hopefully you guys find that useful. If you guys are looking for specific tips on how to answer questions in the situational judgment section, I made a video on this last year. Before we begin, I wanna thank Medify for partnering with me on this video and on this series. Medify is an online UCAT resource and I've been using their questions and their question bank to answer all the questions that I'm doing in this UCAT series. Series. If you guys haven't heard of Medify or you want to check them out, I'll leave links in the description below. And without further ado, let's jump straight into answering situational judgment questions live on camera. All right, so here we are on the Medify website looking at the situational judgment questions for the UCAT. And quick disclaimer before I get into these questions, I haven't practiced situational judgment UCAT questions since last year when I made a similar video to this one, but I have been a student doctor on the wards and in general practice, and I've been talking to patients, examining them, taking histories from them, talking to their families and everything like that for about a year or so. So yeah, I should do really well. I feel ready and prepared for this. Um, so let's just get started. Okay, so first question. John is an elderly gentleman who's in a lot of medication after having a heart attack last year elderly, medication, heart attack. He's also taking medication for diabetes and is finding it difficult to manage uh, when taking specific medications. He's worried about his memory too as he's also had a stroke four years prior to the heart attack. He comes into cardiology review clinic to check on his condition and his doctor named Dr. Smith states that he is not improving as expected. Dr. Smith inquires further and learns about John's habit of forgetting his medication. Okay. How important are the following considerations for Dr. Smith when deciding how to respond to the situation? So. John's forgetfulness could be a sign of an undiagnosed medical problem. Yeah, so I'd say absolutely this is very important. Um, it does mention in the blurb that John himself is getting worried about his memory as well. Uh, so he's worried about his memory too, as he has also had a stroke about four years prior to the heart attack. So the fact that the patient is worried about his own memory is a bit of a worrying sign. And the reason that I say is that, is that it's very important is because it's clearly having a big effect on this patient's health. So because this patient has quite a few comorbidities, them forgetting to take specific medications for any of those is going to be really detrimental. And we know in the paragraph that he is forgetting his medications. Um, and as the doctor finds out, he is not improving as expected. So anything that has an impact on patient health or safety is always going to be very important. Write that down. <laughs> Make sure you put that in your notes. Okay, next. Dr. Smith thinks that that patients who don't take their medication are foolish and risking their life. So this is going to be not important at all. And the reason for that is that Dr. Smith or any doctor's personal opinions or personal um, assumptions or projections that they make onto patients is not important. You treat a patient based on their clinical presentation, based on their health situation. You don't treat them based on what you think of them because of their appearances or their actions or anything else. So this is going to be not important at all. John stated that he thinks that he doesn't like taking his medication because there's so many and would like a reduction in the number of pills he takes. So this is actually quite a common problem in the elderly. It's, it's something that we call polypharmacy, which means that you're taking a lot of medications. So this is something very important to address, right? And the reason for this is that if we don't address this, then John is probably going to continue as he would saying, you know, these medications are annoying. I don't want to take them. And he's going to have worse and worse health as time goes on. We want to address this and reiterate to John how important it is that he takes these medications. Like we said, like we saw in the blurb, he's had a heart attack, he's had a stroke. So these medications are going to be very important in preventing from those things happening again and keeping up his overall health. So I think it's very important that we address something like this. And since this has a direct impact on patient health and patient safety, I'm gonna label it as very important over important. John may need to have further checks to make sure his other conditions are under control. Obviously, this is going to be in the top half of options, either important or very important, um, but I'm gonna go with important as it's not, I guess it's not like the direct, most immediate action that needs to be taken. The first thing that needs to be tackled is that we check his habit of taking medications 
and things like that. Okay, and then finally, John tells Dr. Smith that he has been under a lot of stress this year and this has impacted his daily life. Again, this is either gonna fall in the important or very important category. Now with patients being at the center of the healthcare system, you know, being patient-centered and holistic in the way we approach patients, um, stress and the, the patient situation at home, their mental health are things that are becoming more and more important and that are being taken into account more and more in patients' treatment and management. Um, so this is definitely going to be important or very important. I don't know where to put it though, between very important and important. John tells us that he's been under a lot of stress this year and this has impacted his daily life. I'm going to go with very important, um, but I'm interested to see what the distinction between very important and important is in this question. Um, so let's see how I did here. All right, awesome. Five out of five, correct. I'm gonna have a quick read through them and see if there's anything that they said above what I already added. So this is something really important to note down as well. The wishes of a patient is very important for a doctor consider to consider. Anytime a patient expresses an opinion of theirs or anytime they express a wish, that's something that definitely needs to be taken into account, definitely needs to be tackled and considered. Um, so write that down as well. That's something that's always going to be very important. Okay, great. First question, five out of five. I'm feeling good knowing that I'm a good ethical student doctor. On to the next question. So, Joseph is an FY2 working in a busy A&E ward. If you guys didn't know, FY2 stands for foundation year two. So after you finish medical school, you have foundation year one, and then you have foundation year two. And so that's where this doctor is. In A&E, accident and emergency, he's been working for six days in a row, that's tough, and is looking forward to finishing his shift and going home. He's promised his friend that he will attend the party that day as he missed the last one due to work and is worried that he's continually letting his friends down. He has almost finished his shift and just has to see one patient, Mr. Smith, before he goes home. Mr. Smith is very intoxicated with alcohol and appears agitated, but requires an urgent blood test. Joseph tries to take blood from Mr. Smith, but he becomes aggressive and makes it clear that he does not want to have the blood test. However, it is imperative that Mr. Smith has blood taken in order to be treated. How appropriate are each of the following responses by Joseph in this situation? Whether Joseph has to stay at the hospital for another couple of hours in order to get that blood, or whether he gets a colleague to take that blood in the next hour or so, and he can leave and go home. The end result has to be that this patient gets their blood taken ASAP, and so we can improve their health. Also, I totally forgot to mention that I did not fix my hair today. Um, I kind of woke up and decided to film this video. Hopefully you guys don't mind. I don't think it looks too bad, um, but yeah, anyways. Back to the questions. Ask his senior consultant to perform the blood test instead. Mm, I'd say this is either inappropriate but not awful or very inappropriate. And let me explain why. So this patient is under this doctor Joseph's responsibility. So Joseph is the one who needs to take blood from this patient. And it's not a case where Joseph is unable to take that blood. It's not that he doesn't have the skills or he doesn't know how to, which would be an appropriate time to go talk to a senior consultant. Um, this is just a situation where the patient is being a little bit difficult. So before Joseph goes and talks to the senior consultant, before he escalates the situation and takes it to another person, I think Joseph needs to make a stronger attempt to take blood from this patient. You know, either talk to the patient and explain why he needs to take blood, or leave and come back in a little bit, maybe when the patient has calmed down a bit. Joseph needs to take a little bit more action and try a little bit harder to take blood from this patient before raising this issue to the senior consultant. Now, I wouldn't say this is a very inappropriate thing to do because it's not gonna lead to any harm or any uh, danger to the patient. So I'm gonna say inappropriate, but not awful. Continue with the procedure. It is very important that Mr. Smith has a blood test. So, <clears throat> Joseph tries to take blood from Mr. Smith, but he becomes aggressive and makes it clear that he does not want to have the blood test. So since the patient has made it clear that he does not want the blood test, um, it would be very inappropriate for the doctor to continue with the procedure. Once the patient, ha if the patient refuses treatment or the patient says, I don't want X done, you cannot force that upon them. You cannot do it anyway. You have to respect their wishes. What you can do is come back and talk to them later or have a conversation with them about why they don't want something to happen. And you know, maybe you can change their mind by educating them or informing them of something that they didn't know about, but it would be very inappropriate to continue with the procedure. If the patient says they don't want it, then they don't want it. Ask another junior doctor to complete the procedure so that he does not miss his party. Um, so again, I definitely wouldn't say this is appropriate because 
like, yes, we want Joseph to go to this party because he's been working a long time and he really wants to enjoy his social life and all of those things. But at the end of the day, the patient's health, the patient's safety is the priority and that's always going to come first. So this doctor, Joseph, is going to be expected to have to be late to the party or to miss the party in order to complete his duties as a doctor at the hospital. So I would say asking another junior doctor to complete the procedure in order for him to go to the party is going to be inappropriate. Would it be very inappropriate? I don't think so, because again, it's not gonna cause any harm to the patient. It's not gonna you know, put the patient in danger. So it's not a very inappropriate thing to do. That doctor needs to take responsibility for his patients and deal with all of his jobs before he leaves the hospital. Raise his voice and tell Mr. Smith that he must have a blood test to be treated. Very, very, very inappropriate. Definitely shouldn't raise his voice, A, and B, um, does not, should not be forcing treatment upon this person, unless this person doesn't have capacity or is uh, being treated under the Mental Health Act, but those are two very different situations. He should not force treatment upon this person now or raise his voice for sure. Leave Mr. Smith to calm down and come back later to take his blood. That's exactly what I said at the beginning. Um, also call his friend and explain that he will be late. Very, very, very appropriate thing to do. A, you're leaving the patient who it says is agitated to calm down a little bit and then you're gonna come back. You're gonna take responsibility for this patient. You're going to try to take blood from them. That's correct in itself. And then calling your friend to explain that you will be late, also a very appropriate thing to do. All right, let's see how I did on this one. Okay, so partially correct with one and five being orange. So let's see what one and five were. So I was on the wrong half. So being on the wrong half of these questions is not good. So here I've chosen inappropriate, but the answer was actually appropriate. That means that I'm not going to get any marks for this question. Whereas if I had chosen a very appropriate thing to do, but the answer was appropriate, since both of those are in the same half, let's say the top half is appropriate, the bottom half is inappropriate, you would still get partial marks. So deciding between the top half and the bottom half of answers is the first and most important thing to do. And then whether you choose the correct one within that space is less important. Obviously you wanna choose the right one, but you'll still get partial marks if you don't choose the perfectly correct one. Although his response would make sure that Mr. Smith has the blood test, it is important that Joseph tries to deal with the situation at a direct level before seeking help from his colleagues. So this is what I was saying, that he needs to deal with it himself before seeking help. It would be more appropriate for Joseph to try and calm the patient down and explain the importance of the procedure before trying again. So that's what I said before. In retrospect, looking at this question, generally, if you're ever asking your senior or asking uh, someone for help, reaching out for help, that's generally always going to be an appropriate thing to do, either appropriate or very appropriate. I remembered this from last year, so I should have said that before. Okay, and then the fifth question. So here, for example, I would get partial marks. The correct answer was uh, appropriate but not ideal, but I chose very appropriate, but since I'm in the right half, I would get partial marks. So this is better of a mistake than this mistake I made over here. So I guess something I didn't consider is that it's urgent that they get the blood test quickly in order to treat him. I thought incorrectly that he just needed to have the blood test, not that he needed it right now. Since he needs it right now, then it's less um, ideal to wait and then come back later. Okay, cool. Next question. Eleanor is a first year medical student interviewing the patient starts to become visibly upset. How appropriate are each of the following responses? So I've actually had a similar situation to this where I was visiting a patient in their home in order to take a history from them and sort of understand how their disease impacts on their health on a daily basis. Um, and you know, patients are really kind. They really want to speak to you. They wanna offer you tea, they wanna offer you food, they wanna offer you gifts. Um, and so yeah, sometimes you have to draw the line and say no. I mean, it depends on a lot of things. So let's see what's going on here. So be firm, but polite and refuse to accept a gift explaining the reasons behind it. Um, a gift as a box of chocolates, okay, is not something that is like a big deal, you know? It's not like this patient gave you money, it's not like this patient has given you the rights to their assets or anything like that. This patient is simply giving you a box of chocolates, you know, which probably was not that expensive, it's something quite small, and it's just a gesture to say thank you. In fact, it would probably be a nice gesture to accept the gift, thank the patient, um, you know, and leave it at that because the patient is going to be happy. They want to give you this gift. They want to say thank you. So let's see, be firm but polite and refuse to accept the gift. At this point, the patient has become visibly upset. I think the right thing to do would be to accept the gift. So be firm but polite and refuse to accept the gift, explaining the reasons behind it. 
I would say this is inappropriate but not awful. Um, I wouldn't say it's very inappropriate because it's not going to cause the patient any harm. So just inappropriate but not awful. Accept the gift and say thank you to the patient. I think this would be the right thing to do at this point. Try to calm the patient down. <laughs> this is like when you're in a fight with your girlfriend or boyfriend and you're like, just chill out. Just chill out. Calm down. It's going to be the wrong thing to do. So I'm going to go with inappropriate but not awful. Um, I can't down. I mean, actually, the, no. So try to calm the patient down. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's only going to be a good thing. So calm them down. Refuse to accept the gift and leave abruptly. Absolutely not. Uh, the leaving abruptly part there is the, what's wrong with this. Refuse the gift, but offer to continue visiting her as she seems lonely. Um, so <laughs> this question is a bit difficult because if, if you had to continue visiting this patient, like I did, for example, in my GP, then this would be a perfectly fine response because you are going to go back. You're not going to continue visit, visiting her because she seems lonely. You're going to continue visiting her because she might need um, a checking up on her health or on her situation or, or on her medications to see what's going on. I'm a little bit confused. I'm conflicted for this question, not gonna lie. Let's see. So similar to last question, let's see the ones that I got partially correct, partially incorrect. Here, okay, I was on the right half, so that makes me happy. Um, accept the gift and say thank you. Appropriate but not ideal. So accepting gifts from patients is against GMC guidelines as it can affect clinical judgment and appears unprofessional. However, in some situations, it would be more unprofessional to refuse. So this is what I was trying to get out before. Hopefully I explained that okay. Um, appropriate but not ideal. So here I was on the wrong half. Okay. This response is inappropriate but not awful. Eleanor can see that the patient is lonely and simply wants some company. She's not causing any harm by continuing to visit her. However, as she is only visiting the patient for coursework and has asked all the questions she needs, then there is no need for her to return. It would therefore be unprofessional to Eleanor to continue visiting the patient. So this is what I was saying. For me, for my GP home visits that I did this year, I was asked, I was asked to return to the patient's homes multiple times to follow up with them. So then this would be totally normal. But since like it says here, that the, the student has only visited once just for her coursework, then it would be unprofessional to continue visiting them. So yeah, I should have said inappropriate. All right. Let's have a look at the next question. Jean is a medical student who is on placement. On Jean is wondering whether to come in to keep her company. Interesting situation, okay. How important are the following considerations for Jean when deciding how to respond? That the patient is willing to talk to her. Very important. If the patient does not want to talk to the medical student for any reason whatsoever, you need to respect that wish and you need to not go talk to that patient. Maybe they want some alone time. Maybe they're just thinking of something else. How much the patient wants to talk to you, I should say, is very important. Whether Annette is having a cesarean or a natural birth, this is not going to be important to whether you go talk to her while she's waiting uh, to give birth or while she's waiting for her partner to come. Um, so this is not important at all. The Renette's partner is of the same gender as her. Obviously not important at all. Whether Renette is with a female partner or with a male partner or with someone who doesn't identify as any gender or whatever is definitely not important. Um, you treat patients, you talk to patients and everything based on their health and their clinical need and not on anything else. Whether Annette is in any pain right now, very important. So of course, if Renette is in any pain at all, she's probably not going to want to talk to you as much. She's probably gonna to wanna to see doctors, receive some analgesia, things like that. So I'd say taking into account her pain levels are very important. Whether Renette has any refreshments that she may like Jean to bring for her. If Renette is expecting to receive, I guess, refreshments from Jean, um, that is something to take into account. So Renette might just want the refreshments, but not any company. Um, but the fact that she wants refreshments from Jean means that she want, she's willing to have Jean in the room. She's willing to have Jean come close to her and give her the refreshments. So I'd say important, but not very important. Or, wait a minute, let me go back and read that one more time. Whether Annette has any refreshments, I'm gonna say of minor importance. Okay, let's see, had a change of heart. Five out of five, correct. Good thing I had that change of heart. This is of minor importance, it's a courteous thing to ask her, but really right now, Jean should be focusing on how she can help lift her mood. More direct and effective methods such as talking to and comforting her. Great, on to the next question. I love doing situational judgment questions. They're honestly so much fun. This is like exactly what you will be doing as a second year medical student. You're gonna be talking to all these different patients, finding yourselves in some strange scenarios, you know, patients being really happy, patients being really angry or sad, um, and you need to navigate your way through it. So I really like this section of the UCAT test. I think it's really important. All right, we've got a nice short one here. 
Robert is a junior doctor who's been assigned to spend the next week tutoring a group of medical students. Robert notices that the medical students arrive to the hospital looking somewhat scruffy and are not following the hospital dress code. Not good. He's wondering whether to raise this issue with them. Yeah, probably should. How important are the following factors for Robert to consider? So the medical students might be offended. Um, I mean, they might be offended, but the more important thing at stake here is, you know, medical students are representing doctors and the medical field in general. And so they need to dress appropriately, they need to act appropriately, they need to talk appropriately. Whether they get offended or not, it still has to happen. I'm gonna go with not important at all. Medical students are fully aware of the hospital dress code. This is very important because they're fully aware of it and they're choosing to ignore it. So this changes the situation from someone who, let's say, was not aware of the hospital dress code. So that's gonna be important. Robert has already developed a good rapport with the medical students. This is of minor importance. It, it's not really that important. Whether he has a good rapport or no rapport at all, he still needs to respond to the situation and he still needs to bring it up. The students have been asked by the medical school to give feedback on Robert's teaching methods. Um, <clears throat> so, like maybe in real life, Robert might want to be kinder to the students in order for them to give him better feedback, but definitely for the purposes of this exam and for the purposes of responding and acting like the ideal doctor, um, you're definitely gonna wanna say not important at all here. The student's unprofessional appearance may negatively impact on the impression given to patients. Absolutely, that is the key issue here, that patients might get a negative impression of medical schools, of medical students, of doctors, of hospitals, um, and that should definitely not be happening. Okay, let's see. All right, cool. Four out of five with one partially correct. Robert has already developed a good rapport with the medical students, is apparently not important at all. This factor should not influence Robert's decision to raise the issue. It is a hospital policy for health professionals to adhere to the dress code. I can get behind that. All right, next question. So Hannah is a medical student who's on attachment on a busy ward. Typically, the roles of a medical student in her year are to help with some procedures when supervised, but mainly to clerk patients and observe. The staff on the ward are generally supportive. However, one day she's asked to perform a cannulation on a patient while the foundation yield doctor deals with more urgent patients. She has never been formally taught the technique and is not sure of all the steps. Carry out the cannulation and hope for the best in this case. Definitely not, because there's a risk to patient health and safety if the medical student is going to carry this out without any training, without any guidance, um, just winging it basically. Definitely not the right thing to do. Ignore the doctor and carry on clerking other patients rather than risk it. Again, very inappropriate. Um, because the doctor has asked for this to happen because this probably needs to happen to send off some tests or to administer some drugs or whatever. So this is something that needs to happen. The fact that Hannah can do it is important and should be addressed and a solution should be found for it. It shouldn't just be ignored. Um, so this would be very important, thing, very inappropriate thing to do. Leave a note on the nurse's station about the patient and ask the next nurse you see for advice after clerking patients. Asking advice is not inappropriate. That's appropriate, but this is definitely not ideal. Let the foundation, your doctor, know that she can't do the procedure. Very important thing to do. You know, you need to let them know, hey, <laughs> I'm not trained to do this. I haven't received training to do this and I cannot do this. Offer to try and help the doctor on other tasks that she can do. Very appropriate thing to do. Um, you know, you say, hey, I can't do this because I'm not trained in it or whatever. I would love to learn if you would show me or blah, blah, blah. But if you don't have time for that or whatever, I would love to do some other tasks that um, I can help you with that I'm able to do while you take care of this cannulation. All right, four out of five with one partially correct. Let's see what's going on here. Ignore the doctor and carry on clerking other patients rather than risk it. This is inappropriate because Hannah has not identified any other All right, Joanna is a medical student. Talk to the basketball team and explain that she can't attend the game because she needs to study. Um, so this is definitely an appropriate thing to do because she's talking to the team, she's communicating with them the fact that she's stressed and she has other things she needs to work on. I'm gonna say this is not a very appropriate thing to do because the more appropriate thing to do would say that instead of she can't attend the game, she should just attend less daily training, but maybe she can still go to that big important game. So I'm gonna say appropriate, but not ideal because I think there's a better solution. Ask the basketball team if she can attend training less frequently so that she can fit in more studying. Absolutely very appropriate. Try to ignore the stress, big no-no. Generally ignoring or pushing aside or delaying um, is gonna be inappropriate or very, very inappropriate. Make an appointment with her student advisor to discuss how better to deal with her exam stress. Very appropriate thing to do. That's exactly what student advisors are there for, uh, person, personal tutors, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, they're there to help you when you feel like you're a bit overwhelmed or when you need some advice. 
So yeah, it's a very appropriate thing to do. Attend all of the training sessions and plan to reset the exam in a few months. Absolutely not. You should never plan to reset the exam. You should plan to pass the exam with flying colors. If you happen to fail and need to reset it, that's fine. But you should never plan to reset the exam. All right, four out of five, one partially correct. The response is inappropriate, but not awful. Time out of studying to relieve stress is important. Quitting basketball altogether may make Joanna more stressed. This is inappropriate, really. I mean, okay. All right, next question. How important are the following considerations for Claude? The fact that he has confidentiality of the husband's health, of course, very, very important. He should not talk about the husband's health or cancer diagnosis or anything like that with anyone besides, uh, besides the husband. And of course, to the healthcare team and anyone in charge of his, the husband's health, uh, but I mean to the general public, to the general people, he should not be talking about his health. Claude is feeling a little tired at the moment and wants to go home. So I'd say this is, mm, this is difficult. So I'd say this is of minor importance because I mean, we don't know why the wife is crying. Yes, it's very likely that she has just learned of the, her husband's diagnosis, um, but we don't want to make that assumption. We don't know if that's the case. She might be crying for a totally unrelated reason. Uh, I guess it's, it's not important at all. The more important thing is this person who you see is crying and is upset and you want to see what's going on with them. Um, so that's the priority here. His bus is leaving shortly and speaking to this lady may cause him to miss it. Again, for the same reasons, not important at all. He can always take the next bus. He can take an Uber. He can take the tube, whatever. The level of distress that the lady is feeling, um, it's important, maybe not very important. Uh, regardless of the level of distress she's in right now, we can see that she's crying. So she's at a level of distress that would require his attention anyway. And so he should go see her. No one else is around currently. Um, I'd say that that is important if her husband was there or if someone was already consoling her or something like that, then, you know, maybe you wouldn't have to approach the situation. But if you can see that she's alone, um, then yeah, you're definitely going to want to go talk to her. All right. Nice. Cheeky little five out of five. Hopefully my reasoning was like easy to follow and understand. And yeah, next question. Dr. Smith is working in a rural GP practice and is currently in a consultation with a patient. Dr. Smith and becomes visibly upset. Not that I've seen thousands and thousands of patients, but I have definitely seen this happen once or twice and heard about it happening a lot more. Anyway, how important is it for dealing with the situation that Miss Green is upset? Um, it's important. It's definitely not of minor importance. It's important to take into account, you know, how you're going to tell her that she has incorrect inhaler technique and how you're going to talk about it. In fact, it might be very important. Yeah, I'd say it's very important. The Miss Green lives very far away from the nearest hospital. Also very important because that means that she is less likely to quickly get to hospital if she's having an asthma attack, if her life is in danger and she doesn't have good inhaler technique. So that's very important. The Miss Green disagrees and says she's using her inhaler incorrectly. Not important at all. <laughs> the fact that she disagrees, I mean, maybe of minor importance, the fact that she disagrees doesn't change the situation that she's using it incorrectly, doesn't change the situation that she needs to be told how to use it correctly. Um, although it does change how you would talk to her and stuff. So I'm going to say of minor importance. Yeah. The Miss Green has an extremely severe type of asthma. Super, super, super important. I mean, if she has a severe type of asthma, that means it's even more important that she knows how to use the inhaler, when to use the inhaler, etc. That the GP practice is very busy and Dr. Smith's next patient has been waiting for 30 minutes. Um, this is important, but uh, this patient clearly definitely needs to be taught how to use this inhaler. She's gone to A&E many times. Um, you know, her life is at risk if she doesn't know how to use the inhaler properly and if she doesn't use it when she needs it. So yes, people are going to have to wait. People might be upset. But uh, it's very important that Dr. Smith takes the time to explain to Mrs. Green how to use this appropriately. So I'm going to say this is important, but not very important. I wouldn't say it's of minor importance, but yeah. Mm, I'm between important or of minor importance. Sometimes the wording in these questions kind of trips me up. The G5 is very busy. I'm going to go with of minor importance. It's of minor importance that they've been waiting. Ugh. It's either important or of minor importance. Let's see, 50, 50. Um, so let's see. Damn it, damn it. So close, so close, so it was important. Fine, and I remember in, in some other questions I've done, patience waiting has been important. So 
don't say that it's of minor importance. Patients waiting is gonna be important. All right, guys, and I think that is going to be it for me. That's where I'm gonna cut off this video for answering situational judgment test questions live on camera. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on it, leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more medical school content from me. Also, cheekily follow me on Instagram if you don't do so already. And anyways, guys, I hope you've had a fantastic day. Good luck with your UCAT practice and your UCAT exams, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.